Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today I focus on the last scherzo, scherzo number four, in E major, opus 54. So the, in this video we finish another genre of Chopin's, scherzos. Chopin wrote four scherzos. And if we imagine the public at that time, um, and if we, we try to be one of them, the music lovers, amateur musicians, living in the times of Chopin, living in the year when Chopin composed this scherzo, which was about 1842, so Chopin was 32 years old, and imagine the famous, great, fantastic, uh, best composer Frédéric Chopin is composing, a composed a new and published a new scherzo. <gasps> how great, how wonderful, how beautiful, fantastic, we must have it. Let we go to the store, the bookstore, and we buy it to play it in-house. Of course, that time we, there were no Spotify, no iTunes, no YouTube, no internet, no hi-fi, no music except live music. So the only way to know this piece was to go and buy this score and play it. Of course, to play it, well, to play this scherzo, you definitely needed a quite solid and educated pianist, because this is pianistically the most advanced and the most challenging piece, the most challenging scherzo, definitely. But what was the attitude? What was the expectation? This is important. Expectation was, well, if we, if they, if they knew all the other scherzos of Chopin. So, of course, scherzo number one, drama. Scherzo number two, drama. Scherzo number three, huge drama. So they thought, okay, there will be another dramatic piece full of sadness, full of drama, and there will be nothing... Uh, connected to the scherzo whatsoever. So let's buy it and see how much Chopin ruined the scherzo in a, in a in the sense of a joke, because scherzo from Italian means a joke, as I was telling you already uh, in my video about scherzo number one. So if you didn't watch it, please do it first. Anyway, okay. Is it so? And that is very interesting. Before I start, to play, I play for you a little bit from another music. And this is the question for you. What is this music? Tell me. Do you know this piece? Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi, um, overture called a scherzo, actually, in the play, for the play Midsummer's Night Dream by William Shakespeare. Very famous piece. Written, composed, when Chopin was only 16 years old. Chopin was perfectly familiar with this piece. Chopin was a friend of Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn was a big fan of Chopin. We know even that Chopin um, dedicated one of his mazurka to Mendelssohn's wife. Of course, because Mendelssohn asked him for that. So they were close. Chopin knew this piece. And then... We have Scherzo number four by Chopin. And this, knowing, having this in our ear, which is a true Scherzo, right? Light, funny, joking. Uh, this in the orchestra is played by strings because this is not a piece for piano. Uh, so strings are playing. I recommend you to listen to this if you don't know it. Strings are playing, okay. So now listen. Mm -hmm. 
and so on. This is this is let's say the first dim. <laughs> Imagine here play, this moment played by strings. Which is absolutely possible. It would sound almost like a copy. I definitely Chopin finally decides, <laughs> almost at the end of his life, decides that okay, fine, maybe I write this scherzo as it should be. Because then I die. And everybody will think that I couldn't write a scherzo. So I proved them that I can, but I didn't want to. That's why I didn't. Of course, this is not totally true what I'm talking about now. I'm joking a little bit. But the idea, I mean, the, what, we, what, what we know now by listening to the beginning is exactly what I'm saying. Light, funny and joking and orchestra-like scherzo. Of course, that's how it is. From the construction point of view, if you know this piece, I think you can agree with me that it's not so difficult to know a general idea of the composer, of, of, of Chopin. The general idea is very simple. A, B, A. We have a very long, this is the longest scherzo, by the way, of all four. We have a very long part A, mostly built on this what I just played for you, that part, the, the first theme. Then we have a very long part B, which is like, <coughs> excuse me, which is like a beautiful nocturnal. It's definitely a music that comes straight to our hearts, that is so touching and so sincere that we really get touched, especially when it's played by a pianist who is sensitive and who can feel what Chopin felt uh, during composing this beautiful melody and harmonies. So, and after that, we come back to the first, the part, part A, and then there is an end. So on the surface, it's easy. But of course, these videos are not only to tell you obvious things which you can find out yourself, but maybe to find something that you cannot find out yourself. That's why you are here. That's why I'm talking to you and that's why you are watching it. And indeed, here also we can find a lot of fantastic and genius moments also from the construction point of view. Let me now play for you the whole part A, the big part A, and while playing, I will be uh, naming the certain um, parts of this. So we will, we will use letters like we always do. And then we will see what kind of construction, what, what kind of musical form is the part A. Because in fact, part A has its own construction and then part B its own construction. It seems like there are two completely different pieces of music put together. but. We talk about it after I play. Okay, so let's start. Part A. Thank you. 
part of the scherzo. So everything ends with a total disaster, with a drama like almost in no other piece, with Chopin from other scherzos, with Chopin from revolutionary etude, uh, definitely some, some ballads, ballad number one for example. The end of ballad number one is very similar to this drama. Okay, A, B, A, C, A, what is this? Of course, rondo. If you know what rondo is, rondo is when we have the refrain, we have the team, then B, then team comes back, then C, then teams come back. Here it is exactly like that, but of course I was also shouting about bridges, because bridges here are also important. Bridge is the moment that connects two parts together. And in this piece, bridges are extremely important and are constructed in a genius way, especially we have to focus not on the themes in this piece, but on bridges, because there is the true beauty, there is the true genius. There inside we can feel that it was a genius, human being, who composed this masterpiece. As you can see, pianistically, this piece is extremely demanding. It depends everything from the pianist. It's uh, the most difficult from all the four scherzos and uh, to play it well, the pianist must be simply a complete pianist. What I mean is that his technique especially must be complete because, well, uh, as, as uh, famous pia pianist, Polish pianist Joseph Hoffman was saying that the technique is like a big box uh, with tools. And when we start to learn the piano, this box is completely empty then when we learn certain techniques, we put some tool inside the box and then we should have it full completely with many different tools. And then when we have the, the piece, we take the tool we, we need to play this piece. So for this scherzo, we need a lot of tools. We need all the tools that we have in this box uh, because it's constant, constantly changing the technique, different touch, different way of using the wrist. Uh, finger technique, octave technique, chords technique, 
uh, beautiful of the sound in the middle part, uh, changing of the dynamic, changing of the of the energy all the time, all the time. Co double notes, triple notes, everything is extreme. And, and on the top of that, it must sound like Mozart. I mean, it must sound very easy, light, and like it's a piece of bread uh, for a pianist. <sighs> I must say, well, I, I, I don't play this scherzo for quite a, for, for a long time. It's actually my last scherzo that I've learned. So there is still a lot to focus on and to do. But I hope it is enough to, uh, to make this video for you so that you are satisfied with the analysis. Um, anyway, so okay, so we have the rondo. And after, so it is like the piece, completed piece. Why Chopin didn't finish it in a different way and compose it as a, as a rondo, we don't know. Uh, he made a middle part, which is not completely not similar to this, which is more like a nocturno, you know. It is like a nocturno. So, in fact, in the scherzo number four, I, I'm joking that we have a marriage of rondo with a nocturno. So the marriage rondo with a nocturno and the child from this marriage is scherzo number four. Uh, that's how Chopin made, made it. That's how he made the, the idea of, of this piece. Uh, of course, the idea, the philosophy is much deeper behind it and we try to re reveal it tonight. Uh, so. Okay, let's go to the uh, analysis now, and we now go from the beginning and part by part. We already know how, what the construction is, so it makes it easier. I think already, if you already stop this video and you listen to this piece mm, uh, again, probably your listening will already be different. I, I do hope so, but now I'll try to make it even more different and understandable so that you will have even more fun while listening to this scherzo with this knowledge that we are going to, to reveal. Okay, everything starts from the very simple theme, played with octaves, so we have no harmony. Like every child can play this. Well, even seven years old can play. Anyway, so we have this very naive motif. Four notes, one, two, three, four, and then there is a long note. And now I want to tell you something very interesting. Uh, in this long note, Chopin, he could write uh, a, a sign which looks like this. There is a circle and a dot, and uh, we call it a fermata, which means from Italian, it means actually a bus stop or, tr or uh, the train station or, or uh, subway train station. Fermata means we just play the chord and we wait as long as we want. And Chopin could write here something like this, but he didn't. And this is very important because this piece also we can compare to some kind of um, maybe computer program. I mean, the, or an engineer, uh, an engineer mathematics complicated uh, calculations. Because this is calculated so precisely you would never believe. And it must be executed like this. What I mean? This long chord, which is by the way the first chord in the piece, because we have no chord, no chord, no chord, no chord, chord. So we are so surprised that we need time to realize that this is a chord. Okay, and this chord must last exactly the same amount of time as before we had in these four notes. One, two, three, four. It's extremely crucial. It's crucial. It's extremely important. Unfortunately, very often we hear executions which are not correct. Usually pianists, pianists, young pianists, usually they play a little too early. They can't wait. They, they play a little too early the next note. This is wrong because later, uh, Later you will see why it is wrong, because Chopin is uh, making something inside this theme and he is enriching this chord. Here he writes that please keep it exactly like before this four. So 
simply we have to count i show you one two three four one two three four one two three two three four so two times every time we have this chord it is on four exactly why also because our subconscious when a composer plays i mean shows us this one two three our our beat inside our pulse starts to beat this pam 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 and then suddenly there is a stop this chord but our beat is already beating we can't stop it so that if the pianist plays it too early or too late we subconsciously feel that something is not right because you know music is like a nature and this is almost like uh, if it's not played like this then it's almost like suddenly we see on the street the dog who starts to fly because there's no gravitation well we can't see something like that and we can't have the music which has no gravitation which the mathematics must be always there in music math and music are very close especially in this piece okay so this is the first phrase one two three four and then there is an answer very funny and this kind of lightning uh, lam -pa -ta, lam -pa -ta. listen to let's compare scherzo number two Scherzo number four. So, sorry. Can you play the same rhythm? Listen, but funny. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Chopin. Of course. So, okay. And after that, we have what we have? We have the Mendelssohn. I will call it a Mendelssohn like motif. Mendelssohn. Midsummer Night Stream. But this is very demanding to play. We have strings, so it must sound like a strings, very light. We have all the time we have different position of our hands. Trust me, if you're not a musician, if you are a pianist, you understand me. If you're not a musician, you you just trust me that this is something that we have to practice a lot. And to make it worse, it happens. I mean, at least four different four different. Um, we have four different motifs like this so every time we have to adjust our hand to a different keys different keys exactly anyway okay so this is the first then it is repeated one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four of course maybe you are now thinking what is he doing he's counting chopin is he crazy well uh, i don't i'm not sure if i mentioned that in my other videos but i think it's worth to do it that scherzos are a different genre not very like chopin genre in chopin's music because they are very much uh, inspired by beethoven generally well here more maybe orchestra music but as a construction as a genre by Beethoven and Chopin is constructed scherzos from blocks from bricks made of four bars and if the scherzo is on three actually we have to count it on four all the scherzos one two three four one two three four one two three four also, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Every scherzo is like this, and this particular particularly is like this. One, two, three, four, 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 one. all the skirts so you can count and if you play it like this then it's it makes sense of course you can well what you can do you can change the sound you can change the character a bit as much as you want but not really this 
this this is this thing but that's that's just of course it can be my opinion uh, but uh, it's just how it is built the, how it is constructed the phrasing is constructed like this so it's very neoclassic neoclassic work okay let's continue then <clears throat> As you remember, I shouted after this team, I shouted that there, now we have the bridge. This bridge can also be named already part, part B, but I prefer to call it a bridge. And this bridge is very funny because it's as if we have two, well, we have definitely two motifs which are fighting with each other. This is the music. And now the imagination for me, it makes me, brings me two kids, maybe a sibling siblings they are fighting with each other one is rather calm maybe a girl calm dreamy you know and the other one is crazy totally crazy and then again a girl Again, the boy, naughty boy. And then again, a girl. So why kids? Because they are like this. I'm important. But then the another, come, come on, I'm important. I'm important. Now the, then the girl comes back. No, I'm important. And then the, the go, boy comes back. No, I'm important. And they are they are pushing each other. It's isn't it funny? It's fantastically funny in my opinion uh, and later because this bridge connects us to part B in a fascinating way by using motif from the first team from the first team and something new the figuration And then again, but I, sh I sh uh, soon will play it for you uh, in the whole, but um, one more thing. In this figuration moment, which is also not so easy to play because it's not very comfortable. Maybe it sounds easy, but it's all the time these fingers has to go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it's not so comfortable, but anyway, never mind. In the left hand, we have an extremely important motif which I want you to remember. One note, one note, and four notes. One, two, three, four. Bam, bam. If you focus, well, it depends on the pianist. If the pianist here wants to show off the technique of the right hand, then maybe we don't hear this so much. Uh, but if the pianist wants to it a little bit out like I think Chopin wanted also because it's very important motif then you can hear it uh, okay so now I play it for you or maybe before I play it for you I talk about part B because it is strictly connected okay so we have two motifs which are fighting with which one is more important and then finally in part B it see it it, it turns out that they they don't have to fight together because they can hold the hands and they can show together at the same time. So there we don't need the fight. And it's so beautiful for a moment. So here, when we have part B, in the left hand, you have the girl motif. Also, it depends on the pianist if you can hear it because if the pianist wants to show technique uh, which I personally think it should be hidden uh, of course it is important but it should be a little bit hidden so that we can hear two motifs because in the right hand we have the, this motif of the naughty boy which we had before we have something like so how it sounds together left hand has the first motif right hand has the second motif drama suddenly again the drama the fight this is the 
first thing when we are shocked. We don't expect this trauma in this piece when we listen to it, because it's so light and funny. Uh, and after that, we are we have a kind of a ending of part B, and we go back to part A. But before that, I play for you the whole bridge, because I think it's worth it to have some fun with this fight of two motifs. <laughs> Well, because it cannot be the same after what happened before. This part A discover, um, experienced all this fight of motifs, so it must change because it changed this. We have it more mysterious and a little bit sad and dramatic. Okay, and then trying to be funny. chromatic scale going down this is almost like somebody is happy and then suddenly said because this is a very short bridge which brings us to part C so it happens two times in this piece and every time you just remember that this is the moment just before part C which part C is one of the most brilliant in this piece when again we have a combination of two motifs like before motif fa a fast figuration motif and motif from made taken from the first team i play for you first the first team motif it's exactly the same note these are the same right so okay so moment when it's a little bit connected with the middle part of the scherzo but everything is uh, surrounded by millions of flowers or stars or whatever you want by this very fast and very fantastically written figurations so let's listen to part C the, the first part of part C <laughs> actually is again a bridge and it's my favorite part of the of the skirt this part of skirt song the fast pass of the skirt song we have a lot of figurations so fantastically written and the melody and this is a genius moment because the last time this melody will bring us to part a again without us realizing that because just listen and now and we 
there in part A. This moment. It's, it, it, it becomes part A, gradually. I hope it is very easy to catch. Okay, and now we have the answer why it must be, this chord must be kept in four. Because left hand here, when the part A appears for the last time, left hand is um, having a, li a little fun and is, um, how to say it in English, I don't know, but is repeating, is, say, is um, like kids are sometimes, you know, some, a kid says something and another kid wants to uh, play with this kid, the, the first kid, and is saying exactly the same thing in the same way. So this is a little bit like that. The left hand becomes annoying uh, by repeating what right hand just played. Okay, one again. again this naughty kids but this time only this very naughty boy will stay and now here is what I said for you that this motif from the left hand you should remember pam pam pa 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 pam four notes one two and four because Chopin takes this motif and is Will, will be repeated, rep repeating, 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 repeating many times and creating a huge drama. So in fact, this very motif uh, is blamed for the whole drama that will be here. Just listen. We are shocked. There is a silence then. And only because of this huge drama and only when the pianist really plays it dramatically and banging the piano, like making us, putting us inside the, the seat on the floor. Only then the middle part of the scherzo makes sense. Because after this drama, we have something completely different and full of sorrow, jal, you know, this Chopin's jal, so sorrow, sadness, longing, music which, which speaks for itself. I don't have to really analyze it too deeply because I do believe that this music just talks because Chopin was extremely sincere when he wrote it. But let's let's play it and let's look at it a little bit closer. This is the bridge. And this is like a nocturno now. And we have the melody. Let's see how long the phrase is. for this phrase. the 
beginning. I will talk about it later. So did you hear how long this phrase is? And here we have another challenge. If the pianist decides to play it slow, too slow, then again it will collapse, I mean, the whole, the whole piece. Because simply one cannot sing this, melody, this long melody in one brief in a slow tempo. Of course, it has to be slower than the, 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 part, the scherzo, the first part, the part before, the scherzo part. But if you play it... Then you have to make a brief here. Which, in my opinion, is a little bit too, too often. Because then you make more phrases than we really have here. So let's imagine that somebody is singing, like in the Nocturnos, somebody is singing the phrase. repeating this melody again but with, with another voice is coming so the maybe a woman because upper voice is coming and repeating the same melody but the man doesn't disappear but continues singing with her so they are united now like in a bar carol in a way because they every time are together when she goes up he goes up when she goes down he goes down and we have a very beautiful duet now. Let's listen to duet without the left hand I play for you, only the duet. making like a free uh, how to say it's, um, free well they are not screams but um, expression of big pain we have this we have this this uh, very painful intervals and they are very important here Okay, so let's listen to the duet in its entirety now. It was sad, it was heartbreaking. Now we have some hope. Chopin is bringing us to another world, and this is part B of this middle part. Hey! 
ready, but unfortunately, it was only a dream. And we come back to part A again. So this part B is very special. And especially if you're a musician, you will understand the deepness and fantastic moment here when we when Chopin connects two harmonies which are so far away from each other like earth and a moon just together without any modulation practically we have f sharp minor which f sharp major sorry which has six sharps and we have suddenly f major which is on the one flat right so together they are it is it is banned it is not allowed to connect them but Chopin doesn't listen to books about harmony. He listened to his heart and his soul. And this is so heavenly written. Listen again. Absolutely amazing. the duet part C or a bridge which will bring us to the beginning of the piece and now okay we have to come back to <laughs> we have to come back to this how the hell come back to this being in this very sorrowful and a sad melody it's impossible to do what a challenge for a composer isn't it let's just listen how Chopin made it um, he made it in a fantastic way. Well, first I explain to you and then I, I play for you. We are at the bottom. We are piano pianissimo, time stopped, everything stopped. Chopin slowly is going to build the dynamic and energy using the waves, like in the ocean. First wave is not so much, then more, then more then more left hand will be uh, uh, making these waves until it ends with a big drama the dramatic chord after which all of a sudden we again go down and from that moment we will start to build the energy again but together with the tempo now so there are two ways of building energy first is on the dynamic and the drama Second is the tempo. And then we arrive to the trill, something that didn't happen before in the scherzo. The trill is, you know, play, you play fast two notes. And this is fascinating because this trill, which is something new in the scherzo, will be a now focus, will be an accompaniment of the first theme. How is possible to have accompaniment with the trill? Where? Well, just listen. Possible? Yes, possible. This is the secret and this is the way how Chopin decided to fix together, to, to put them, to make them together. Okay, let's listen to the whole, one of the most genius moment in this piece.
So this is fantastic, right? When the right hand starts... Faster! 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 it's exactly the same like part A. Uh, we have again the bridge with two naughty kids motifs, again we have part A uh, which is more dramatic a little but exactly it's the same. Then we have part C and then we have, do you remember this my, my favorite bridge? The first time it brought us to part A, right? The, in the second time it will not bring us to part A because we have to go back to the end of the piece so I mean we have to reach the end of the piece so Chopin changed his mind and he used this bridge to bring us to Coda let's listen how he make this <laughs> happening here we have what first of all we have the trill so the trill became extremely important um, motif in this sec in the second a but this trill is only a accompaniment for the a, a dialogue a dialogue of two persons does it remind you something of course uh, The dialogue from the middle part here in a in a way we have the same kind of uh, in, uh, impression so it was he he then she then he song again listen how fantastically but this time this motif is much longer and die completely die and from this death when we are in zero in the ground Chopin will be building energy until the end, until the, the very uh, virtuoso and powerful, grandioso end. By building energy like a big wave coming closer and closer, closer to us, and then at the end you will hear one more, one last time, the motif from the first theme. But this motif... So just listen to how it ends. Again. Well, actually, I played for you again from this Mendelssohn dying moment. 
Again, please, again. As you can see, we have octaves, um, like in scherzo number three, and then the scale, like in scherzo number one. Well, you know what? Now I'm just, I just came, something came to my mind now, which must not be, might not be true, but just at this moment when I'm doing this video that in the last page of the scherzo number four, we actually have motifs from all the three scherzos, number one, number two, and number three. Number one, with the scale going down, of course in number one, the scale is chromatic, but never mind because it's still the scale going up. From scherzo number two. What is this? Scherzo number three. And then we have. Oh my god, I think it's like a Eureka moment. <laughs> well, for me at least. Wow, wonderful. I didn't think about it before. So this video was actually very important also for me. Sometimes it happens. Thank you very much for watching. And um, I hope I will record it on the CD because I want to record all shop and music uh, next year. And uh, well, I finished Scherzos and my next project will be Sonatas. So the, the greatest, well, the, the biggest masterpieces. Thank you for being with me. Um, I really appreciate it. And I hope it's very interesting and even if it's so long, you still can, can deal with it. Thanks a lot and see you again. Bye bye.